Hi there students and welcome to Crazy Nurse RN channel. I'm Crystal Mardukanes, nurse educator, teaching fundamentals of nursing practice. If you have any question or if you want to clarify some gray areas with regard to our topic today, please comment down below. I'll be glad to read your comments and answer your questions. Also, if you want to suggest any topic or content for our next videos, please write them below. And if you find this YouTube channel useful, please click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell to keep you updated for new video uploads. Please do not forget to check the description below for additional inputs and some clarifications with regard to this lecture video. So today, our topic is about stress and coping. So what is stress? Stress is a condition in which an individual experiences changes in the normal balance state. So that means anything that changes the normal state of a person, that is a stress. What is stressor? Any event or stimulus that causes an individual to experience stress. So we have here coping strategies, also known as coping responses or coping mechanisms. So these are responses when a person faces stressors. Okay, so that is your stressor. It's an event or a stimulus, okay, that causes an individual to experience stress. Sources of stress. So we have internal stressors. We have external stressors and we have also developmental stressors and situational stressors. When we say internal stressors, it originates within a person. Okay, examples. We have your infection and we have your feeling of this depression. Okay, so these are or these originated from the inside of the body okay we also have external stressors so it originates outside the individual examples are a move to another city okay a death in the family and pressure from the peers so these come from the outside of the body okay so this is considered as your external stressors now we have here developmental stressors so it occurs at predictable time throughout an individual's lives okay so here i have an example of developmental stressors so we have here developmental stage and the stressors in each stage so for a child Stressors are beginning school, establishing peer relationships, peer competition. Okay. For adolescents, we have changing physique, relationships involving sexual attraction, exploring independence, and choosing a career. For young adults, we have marriage, living home, managing a home, getting started in an occupation, continuing one's education, and children. Okay, For your middle adult, we have stressors like physical changes of aging, maintaining social status and standard of living, helping teenage children to become independent and aging parents. For older adult, we have decreasing physical abilities and health, Changes in residence, retirement, and reduced income, and death of spouse and friends. So as can be seen, in each developmental stage, there is an, a counterpart stressors. Okay, So we have to know these, uh, these stressors per developmental stage. Next, we have your situational stressors. 
So unpredictable and may occur at any time during life. So may be positive or negative. So examples of your situational stressors we have death of a family member, marriage or divorce, birth of a child, new job, and illness. So these are unpredictable and it can happen any time during life. Okay, so that is considered your situational stressors. So we have effects of stress. So it can be physical. It can affect emotional, intellectual, social, and spiritual. Okay? So again, these five aspects of a human person could be affected by stress. So we have model, models of stress. First, we have the stimulus-based models, response-based models, transaction-based models. Okay, for your, uh, your stimulus-based models, we have here, stress is defined as a stimulus, a life event, or a set of circumstances that arouses physiological and or psychological reactions that may increase the, the individual's vulnerability to illness. So this means that the stress experienced by a person could predispose him or her to become or to be vulnerable to illness or diseases. So that is your stimulus-based models. We also have here response-based models. So stress is considered a response, okay? So the non-specific response of the body to any kind of demand made upon it, okay? So we have here a general adaptation syndrome or known as GAS, okay? So also known as your stress syndrome. It is a chain or pattern of physiological events and occurs with the release of certain adaptive hormones and subsequent changes in the structure and chemical composition of the body. So this means that a body reacts to stress by way of release of adaptive hormones and changes in the structural and chemical composition of the body. So it generally affects the whole uh, body of the person. So the body of the person reacts as a total entity to that stress, okay? That is your general adaptation syndrome or GAS. For your local adaptation syndrome or your LAS, body reacts locally to stress, okay? One organ or a part of the body reacts alone to stress, okay? So, in your local adaptation syndrome, your body reacts locally, okay? For example, you have a cut, okay, or an injury on your left forearm. So, the body reacts to that injury by way of creating inflammation, okay? So, it's a localized inflammation, okay? Only your left forearm is involved in that process, okay? So that's the difference between your gas and your LAS. So in your gas or your general adaptation syndrome, the body as a whole reacts to the stress. Okay? For your local adaptation syndrome or your LAS, a portion on an organ or parts of your body reacts to the stress, such as inflammation, such as uh, localized inflammation. Okay? So we have three stages of gas and LAS. So first, we have your alarm reaction, resistance, and your exhaustion. So these are the three stages of your gas and LAS. Okay? So for your alarm reaction, it is the initial reaction of the body. So alerts the body's defense. So it is classified into two phases. Okay? We have the shock phase and the counter shock phase. So when we say shock phase, stressors stimulate the sympathetic nervous system and it stimulates the adrenal medulla 
to secrete epinephrine and norepinephrine. Okay? So, it is also known as your fight or flight response. Okay? Your sympathetic nervous system response causes your causes these following reactions or responses. So, we have increased myocardial contractility. Okay? So, that means your cardiac rate increases. Okay? And the contractility of your heart also increases. Okay? Bronchial dilation. So, meaning your bronchus dilates. Okay? That means you are breathing rapidly. So, that is a response, a sympathetic nervous, uh, sympathetic nervous system response due to uh, alarm reaction caused by stress. Okay? We also have increased blood, in uh, blood clotting. So, for example, if you have an injury, okay, so your body will activate its blood, in, blood, uh, blood clotting factors to stop the bleeding. Okay? We also have your increased cellular metabolism. There is an increased metabolism of the body and increased fat metabolism. Okay? So, your fats are being metabolized to be used as an energy for the for the sympath for these sympathetic nervous uh, responses okay so all these responses are caused by your uh, sympathetic nervous system under your shock phase okay we also have your counter shock phase so the changes produced in the body during a shock phase are reversed so meaning those vital signs okay or those responses are back to normal okay so your body has adapted okay or has um, adapted to the situation or to the stress okay so the normal functioning is uh, gradually going back to its normal state okay so after that alarm reaction it will now uh, proceed to the stage of resistance okay when the body's adaptation takes place so the body attempts to cope with the stressor and to limit the stressor to the smallest area of the body that can deal with okay so in your stage resistance so it's it is when the body's adaptation happened okay and your body attempts or try its best to contain the stress in a smallest portion or smallest area of the body so that is your stages of resistance you are the body is resisting to the stress okay by way of containing it in the smallest area of the body then after your stage of resistance resi uh, resistance we have your stage of exhaustion so the adaptation that the body made during the second stage cannot be maintained okay so the way the ways used to cope with the stressor have been exhausted or used up so the result can be rest and return to normal or worst death okay so we have two outcomes under your stage of exhaustion exhaustion exhaust uh, exhaustion we have your recovery and we have your death okay so i have here a diagram the three, the three stages of adaptation to stress, the alarm reaction, the stage of resistance, and the stage of exhaustion. Okay. So try to uh, focus on the line above. So we have their homeostasis in blue uh, color. Okay. Homeostasis. So all systems are reactive to everyday stressors in a balanced and helpful manner okay so we have here the alarm okay alarm phase okay or the uh, or the alarm reaction so the stressor is perceived okay there is a stressor now okay homeostasis slightly drops as the mind and body temporarily lose balance so in your alarm or alarm reaction phase we have shock phase there so your shock phase activates your epinephrine and norepinephrine and your cortisone and the following responses are made okay 
Then after that, once the body has uh, adapted to that stress, okay, so it will have it will proceed to your counter shock phase, okay. That is under your alarm reaction phase. Then once the body has gained uh, its adaptation to the stress, so it will now proceed to your resistance, okay, to the stage of resistance, okay. Adaptation resources are mobilized to combat stressor. Endocrine system comes into play. So there is a release of hormones here, okay. Then after that, once uh, stage of resistance is done, it will now proceed to your exhaustion or stage of exhaustion. So adaptation and energy stores are depleted. When replenished, the body returns to homeostasis. So we have two outcomes under your exhaustion stage. So we have death and recovery. For your death, in extreme or chronic cases, exhaustion can become so pronounced that death can occur. Okay. Also, in a positive side, your patient can recover. Okay. So stressful situations that are well or partially managed result in a complete partial return to homeostasis and normal functioning. Okay. So this is a simple diagram of your alarm reaction stage of resistance and exhaustion okay so these are the three stages of your uh, stress response okay we also have your transaction based models so stimulus theory and response theory do not consider individual differences okay so the previous two uh, models focuses on a general uh, individual focuses generally okay it does not consider individual differences here in your transaction based models it considers individual differences so people and groups differ in their sensitivity and vulnerability to certain types of events as well as in their interpretation and reactions it means that each one of us each one of us has its own individualized or unique way on how to deal with stress and these transaction based models focused on that uh, concept so transactional stress theory